Hello friends, today I'm comparing a blue car with a blue car. That's right, the Macan S versus the Macan GTS. And I know some of you are going to be a bit, huh, this is not the S versus GTS video we're waiting on Nick, we want the 911. Well, I am definitely going to do that video soon as I can get two very similar 911 configurations, one in an S and one in a GTS. But meantime, you'll be surprised how much overlap there is in that video with this video. Most of the things I'm going to say in that video are in this video as well. Before we get on to comparing these two cars directly, let me have a little speech about GTS models as well, because I know everybody thinks that I run the GTS models down too much, and maybe I do, but the reality is that there really are two categories of GTS cars out there, and Porsche makes some really kick-ass GTSs. Some examples of that would be like the 718 GTS with the 4-litre engine, that is a significantly more enjoyable car to drive than the S model of that same car. Same with the Panamera GTS with the V8 engine. Also, more responsive, better sounding. Even though it's only 15 horsepower more, that is a lot of fun to drive compared to the S. That is a big upgrade. And even within the Macan range, with the facelift model, the one previous to this one, um, you had the 2.9 litre engine in the GTS compared to the 3 litre engine like my car in the S. And I wish I'd waited a couple of months and got the GTS in that range. So there are definitely some amazing GTS models. But there are also a lot of, what should we say, fluff models within the GTS range as well. That is cars that are mostly designed, I think, by the marketing department and are just options with a very small increase in horsepower. And I'm not saying they're bad cars, because they're not. They're still excellent cars, they're based on the S. You know, and you'd be hard pressed to find any reviewer on YouTube or any magazine that would ever say a bad thing about a GTS model, because they are wonderful cars. But here's the thing, you generally pay about 20% more for a GTS model, and you have to ask yourself, is that 20% more fun to drive, or have something that makes it 20% better than the S model. And that's what we're going to do today in today's video. We're going to look at a GTS model which has the exact same engine as the S model and think, is this worth 20% more? And these two cars are approximately 20% more, even though the base price between the two cars is 15,000 difference. The S model we're driving here has got a few options in it. The GTS model's got a few options in it. So you're, you're looking at, you know, ten to $15,000 more between these two cars. So both these cars are 2023 models. They're both facelift facelift models. That is, there was a facelift of the Macan in 2020. And here we are with another facelift as we wait for the EV Macans to come out. And they've got the new interior to bring them in line with the rest of the Porsche range. And some trim changes on the outside, just minor changes, different options, different colors and so forth. They've dropped the turbo model now, the GTS model which I'm driving here has the more powerful 2.9 litre engine in it, and the S model has the same engine, the 2.9 litre engine that sounds better, and is supposedly detuned. I've driven both cars, I honestly cannot feel a difference. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to do a 0 to 60 time, and we might even do a little drag race in a minute to see whether we can find the difference. The, the owner of this car, the GTS car, is driving the S car at the moment, he says he can also not feel the difference in power between the engine. But there are a lot of differences between the two cars. You do get a lot of standard equipment on the GTS, and I'll go through those right now. At the time of filming, the 2023 model Macan GTS is $15,000 more than the S here in the US. And while that is a lot of stripper singles, you do get a lot of extra stuff for that money. Uh, does that stuff make it a more enjoyable drive? Eh, in most cases, no, but it does make it stand out over the S. Starting on the outside with the S on the left and the GTS on the right, uh, oddly the S model actually gets more painted surfaces with the grille trim painted, which is more noticeable on the light colours. However, the lower trim on the GTS gets painted as standard. Personally, I actually prefer how the S looks from the front. Over to the wheels, the GTS gets the larger 21-inch spider wheels in black as standard, and the S gets the 20 inch S wheels in titanium as standard. While I am a fan of the 21 inch wheels, once again I actually prefer the colour and style of the S wheels in this case. Onto the brakes, the GTS gets the very sought after upgrade of the surface coated brakes, uh, which is a 3500 upgrade on the S, and the S gets the standard 6 piston 360mm brakes, which work just fine, but of course 
They make your rims all dirty. The GTS gets the painted side blades, whereas the S gets the textured black blades. Personally, I prefer the painted on the GTS. Around the back, the GTS gets the clear tail lights, whereas the S gets the standard red. Lower down, the GTS gets the skirt trim painted, whereas the S is left with the standard black plastic. Up the top the GTS gets a diffuser with holes in it, uh, the S gets the solid diffuser. The GTS gets the sports exhaust system which is a $3,000 option on the S. It does lift the volume of this great sounding engine a noticeable amount. Also a louder engine, certainly seems more grunty don't you think? Finally on the outside the GTS gets the excellent air suspension as standard. A $1,400 option on the S which this one also has. Lowers the car, makes it more comfortable, the, the air suspension is just excellent. On the inside, the GTS gets the beautiful black brushed aluminium standard, which is not even an option on the S. The S in this case has the plastic carbon fiber. This is an area I much prefer the GTS trim. The GTS also gets the 8-way sports seat as standard with memory. This one has the 18-way. Also, for me, a personal preference over the 14-ways. In some countries, the Sport Chrono is now standard on the GTS as a $1,200 option on the S. However, the real supposed difference between these two models is in the performance. And according to Porsche, 375 horsepower versus 434 horsepower, a 60 horsepower bump uh, and a few handling tweaks, which we're about to find out might be less of a differential than you might think. More in the imagination of the Porsche marketing people than in reality. Okay, so I've switched over into the S model. This has got the wide interior, but otherwise it's much the same car as I talked about. It's just trim, trim changes. And what I'm really interested in, is there a big difference in the engine here? Uh, so we're gonna do a little short drag race, and I'm also gonna do naught to 60 times later on off camera, and we'll, and we'll compare those as well. Okay. Rolling drag race, one, two, three, go. Okay, so yes, drag races are a bit of a childish way to spend your day, but it did sort of prove a point. You know, that was just over 100 miles an hour by the time we stopped that drag race, and he had only got almost a car length ahead of me. Is that 60 horsepower more? Absolutely not, of course. It's uh, maybe five or 10 horsepower more, um, but it's an imprecise measurement. So I did some other measurements. I got my phone and I did some acceleration tests with my phone, I couldn't, really see a difference there either but what I ended up doing was a real world acceleration test where I just filmed the speedometer and I just from a standstill both cars in sport mode no launch control no preloading of the clutch none of that stuff just real world where I put my foot down to the floor went naught to 63 or 100 kilometers an hour and then this is the result Okay, so the result is that at 63 miles an hour, the S was trailing by only one mile an hour. But the S also had a full tank of gas, whereas the GTS had half a tank, so that's 50 pounds difference. So the S was dragging 50 pounds more, so there's really nothing in it. There's really nothing in it. So if, there's, if the GTS is more powerful, it's by the smallest margin, and certainly not a margin that, that, that you can feel in the seat. Uh, there's no difference in performance between these two cars. And so you might ask, well, which one is it? Is it, you know, there's meant to be 60 horsepower between them. Is it the 400 horsepower or is it the 375 horsepower? Well, I think they're both in the 400 plus horsepower bracket uh, based on their performance. You know, my, my real world acceleration test was on a hot day, uh, you know, up a slight incline, so you're not getting the best speed out of it but it shows that both cars accelerate at least at least to 63 miles an hour, both at approximately the same amount. I think once you get over 100 miles an hour, the GTS might just edge ahead, but only by the smallest margin. So why does Porsche do this? Why don't they just give accurate horsepower numbers? Well, it's all marketing, of course. They want you to spend more with them, and the GTS package obviously is 20% more, and people, there's a lot of people that are gonna buy the GTS purely because they think it's the more powerful model. And if they both showed a similar horsepower figures, then far more people would buy the S. 
it is what it is. Okay, so from a power point of view, certainly you, from the driver's seat, you can't tell the difference between these two cars. You absolutely can't. If there's a difference, it's minute. What about the handling? Everybody goes mad for the GTS handling on the Macan, on the 911, et cetera, et cetera. And, and I kind of call nonsense on that as well. You know, it's supposed to have, the GTS is supposed to have 20 or 30% stiffer, this and that and whatever. Jumping between the cars, I can't tell the difference. And thank God for that, because the handling in the Macans has always been superb. They get it just right. The BMWs are too stiff, the Audis are too soft. The Macan has always been a beautiful handling car, and I wouldn't want it any stiffer. I don't personally notice that the GTS any is stiffer, and, th and I'm grateful for that. You know, they shouldn't be messing with what I consider to be a perfect setup, particularly when you have the air suspension as well. Anyway, you've got the, um, the electronic dampeners that can stiffen it up. I really think that Porsche marketing are just playing a game often when they talk about the tweaks to the handling on the GTS models. So there you have it. I don't think there's a performance or handling difference between the S and the GTS and the Macan and a lot of the other models as well. Um, so that begs the question, <laughs> what on earth are the other 400 YouTubers and car magazines talking about when they talk about what a big difference it is and, and how the GTS is the sweet spot in the range. Yes, hilariously the straight pipes guys pointed this out this week that everybody parrots the Porsche marketing on this, that, it's, that the GTS is the sweet spot in the range. Whereas if they actually took the time to drive an S and a GTS back to back, they might scratch their heads a bit and go, huh, actually there's no difference. And that's kind of the placebo that Porsche don't want you to know, is that they've gone to a lot of trouble to try and differentiate these two cars on paper, but in reality, it's just not there. So yeah, I personally, I would buy the S and put the few items on it, like air suspension and a couple of trim items, maybe different wheels or something like that, and still save myself, you know, 10 grand or more over the GTS, because they're both, the, both amazing cars, I just, I don't need all the, all the trim items. I, I find the, the S trim items perfectly fine for me. And 10 grand is a lot of money. What can you get for 10 grand? Well, you can get a full-sized Rhino statue for your garden. Actually, you can get two for that price. Maybe even squeeze in a Fat David as well. Besides, the S is far more available. That is, you can actually probably even push for a small discount on the S's and the base model Macan's because there is good allocation on them. There's still terrible allocation on the GTS's. Uh, I don't know when that's going to be fixed, but yeah, if you're buying an S at the moment, I don't know, most dealers probably still won't give you a discount, but you could push. There is reasonable allocation on these cars at the moment. And if you're like me and you like tinkering with the configurator, I've discovered an, an unintentional Easter egg in there at the moment. If you go to the Macan GTS and put the color as ruby, metallic, um, copper, whatever it is, um, and then tell it painted wheels, it immediately throws the car up on blocks. I guess it's such a sought after model, the painted wheels, that they know they're gonna get stolen. Although they may have fixed this uh, error in the configurator by the time this goes live because I posted this on my Instagram the other day and Porsche themselves came back and commented uh, about this. I think they keep an eye on the horrible things I say about their cars. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful, particularly for you guys looking to buy a Macan S or GTS. Both excellent cars. There's no wrong choice here. If you like the trim items on the GTS, pay the extra money, you get the GTS. But if you don't need all those trim items, just buy the S. The more available, save yourself 10 grand or more. Same performance. Anyway, thanks for watching everyone. We'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to get yourself the rapid dry mark one washing and the rapid dry towel and get your car cleaned in five minutes flat i recommend these products because i use them every day myself not just on my car but on my dogs as well